In this Parametric Design video, I'm going to showcase the Echo installation by uh, Tilo Frank. And as you can see here, this one is a rectangle which has been cut off by a plane. And another project by him is a triangle, which is simply a triangle rotating and then cut off by a plane. Uh, we will also uh, work this in Rhino and Grasshopper. And I'm going to show you how simple it is. You can also use uh, the Rhino interface to make a twisted box and put that on the ground and then with a uh, use of simple uh, components and several steps we're going to reach the uh, sections as you can see here so first I want to show you uh, some pictures of that so let's just go forward as you can see here this is the picture of the echo installation and if I zoom in in this project you can see these details here Okay, so these are the details which the sections sit on. As you can see here, these are the steel sections. And uh, you can imagine that these sections are going inside these uh, wood sections. And I'm going to show you also in another picture. So as you can see here, these are the sections. And let me show you this small video. I made this a fast forward video so you can simply see how uh, the project look like and this video shows you uh, how the project looks when you just walk in it and again you can see these sections here and this is the pathway uh, which was produced we also have a tutorial about this in our grasshopper course so if you just manage to go to our course we have a similar to this tutorial but in this video i'm going to explain this a little bit faster and show you the main concept. So this is the project and you can see uh, how beautiful it is. So let's just go to this picture and in this picture you can see a little bit of the details about this one and uh, the floor, how it is made and these steel sections which the timbers just go in. So these are a little bit details of that echo installation project. Again you can see those details and how these sections sit on it. So uh, again this is a time lapse and you can see uh, the project again here and those installation. This just shows uh, the finishing so it's not a really important thing. So let's just go forward and you can see the triangle installation again here uh, with the same uh, manufacturer. So this is also beautiful and you can see how uh, easy it is to use these uh, and I just found this another picture that is a little bit similar but didn't cut off so you can see another application of that. Okay so let's just go to the uh, Rhino Grasshopper interface and see how we can make that. I'm going to make this as simple as possible so let's just go start from scratch and we're going to start with the box so I'm going to go to the box and use the center to draw a center box and hit zero and enter and you can see that this is the center I'm going to use the shift key to make it a square and bring it up okay because we don't need these two faces I'm going to explode this box and delete the top and the bottom again join that back okay and because we want to twist that and then put that on the ground I'm going to draw a line from zero uh, use the control key and click again on the zero point and bring it up to this height and use that as the axis. So what I'm going to do is to type twist, select the object and the start of the axis is going to be here and the end of the axis is going to be here. So because the project is going to end at the start and the end is going to be the same, we can just type something like uh, 180 degrees, 360 degrees, something like that. So I'm going to type 360 degrees rotation twist and have this finished. Okay, so now we can simply just draw a circle and bring this onto a circle if we want or uh, another path if you just want to make a freeform path. So what we're going to use is to use the flow and select this object enter. Uh, be sure to use the stretch to yes because we want to stretch this to match the new length and then we're going to go to the base curve which is 
this curve, this line, and the target curve is this one. Okay, here we go. So you can see how easy it is to produce that. If you just go here and put the record history on, I'm going to use again the flow, select the base line and the target curve. And the good thing is that if I just go to the ghost and use that circle and make it a little bit smaller with the shift key, you can see that this will also change. So you can simply just change that into big and smaller results and they just go back to the shaded and here we have this. Okay, let's just go to the grasshopper and see how easy it is to produce those sections. So I'm going to go to the palms menu and bring that uh, boundary representation. Okay, let's just put the bifocals in. The boundary representation as a solid into that and set to this. Let's just hide this and here we have this. We can also have that circle so we can bring that sections on. Okay, what we want to do is to produce sections on this. So I'm going to go to the curve section. We also have uh, talked about this in the course, but for now you can see how easy it is to go to the per, uh, pre, uh, perpendicular frames into the curve section. Let's just put this here and we can increase the counts maybe from 10 to 30. Here it goes. We can change those sections. You can see that it starts from here. And then what we want to do is to first uh, make two sections of this. If you look at the project, let me just put the project on. You can see that this is also cut with a plane. So if we just go to Rhino, uh, draw a plane on this. Let's go to the surface section and use this rectangular plane. That will be fine. This is a simple example of how you can make that and bring that surface into Grasshopper. Let's just set this. And I'm going to cut this with this surface so we can also move this a little bit down or up and then go to intersection. And in the shape section, you can use this split BREP tool in the shape section, okay? So I'm going to go to split BREP and split this solid with this cutter. So now if I bake the result, you can see that we have two sections here, right? And we want the top. So what we're going to do is to go to type item and use the list item tool because we want to pick an item. So we just simply type an item and perhaps the first one I mean index zero, which is the first index, is the top of that. If you just give this a one, you will have the bottom. So it's zero and one. So we just delete this and we can turn everything off. And here we have uh, the base thing. And let's just move this up. Again, you can see that we have a new results. And now we can just uh, have the intersection of this solid with these frames. So let's just go to the intersection and use the BREP, BREP, uh, solve intersection events for two BREPs. And we can just simply intersect this one. Okay, we don't have the uh, BREPs because we have planes, so we're going to make it. So let's just go to the surface primitive, and I'm going to make plane surfaces on that. So let's just make the plane surface. Okay, you can see that these are uh, domains, minus 10 to 10, because the center is here uh, from minus 10 to 10. So uh, we're going to increase that. We can simply go to math and use the domain section here, construct domain, and maybe just increase that a little bit, 15.5. So we're going to go from minus 15 going to go to the expression and give this a minus 6 because we want to go from minus 15 to plus 15. So that's really easy, minus 6, and we're good to go. And you can increase those plane size so they intersect with your solid. And now we can give that as the second intersection. Let's just turn everything off and you can see how easy it is to produce those intersections, increase them if you want. Let's just increase them to 50. You can see how easy it is to increase that. And at the end, we can simply just extrude them. And okay, I'm going to go to EX 
extrude, extrude these curves, and extrude that, that those curves in the z direction. So here we have the planes, as you can see, and we need those z directions. The best way you can do that is, and it's really easy, you can simply connect a vector to the planes, the frames. This will give you the z direction. So this is a little hint you can use. And then let's just go to the math and multiply that with a number. Here we go. And if I give this to the direction, it's going to multiply everything. You can see that. That is because this is in groups and this is not in groups. I'm also going to put that tutorial about the groups and flatten and graph on the top of here. So check out the cards. So let's just graph this and make this also in groups and here we can also increase or decrease the thickness of the uh, sections and let's just bake them in layer one and we just go back to rhino that's the results we can also select the layer one and use the offset surface here uh, remember you have to make that a solid you can give this a thickness a distance I don't know if one is fine, but let's just check that. It's going to make you some solids with a thickness of one. So here is the results. And you can see how easy it is to uh, make that. This was a tutorial of how you can also produce those concepts. So if you want to make a triangle, you can also use this concept to make that project as you just saw here that this was a triangle. So this will be also a good exercise if you want to work this uh, with a triangle. So this was a, a simple review of the project, also a simple tutorial of how you can make that in Rhino and Grasshopper. And thank you for watching. Thank you for watching and subscribe to our channel. And you can also watch uh, something that is related to this video, that corner, and see you next time.